you know like four years ago when there was that whole health craze about peanut butter and yeah. all these like um like meridian peanut butter came out and it used to have to like stir in the oil i'm not about them no all about the sun pat smooth and crunchy normally crunchy if i'm honest oh delightful evie i used i still ask dad for like a massive tub at christmas i really want to um, try like almond butter and cashew butter oh i want to try cashew almond is mm. like meh but i can live oh, okay. without it i do love cashew nuts but though so i feel like cashew butter might be right forward. but the thing is with these like companies and stuff they've tried to make it too health food-esque mm. like i'm like just give me some pat peanut butter but just swap in for cashews like i don't need any fancy i don't need you to reduce the sugar i just want a different nut yeah mate we should start our own company to be honest (laughs) i know we should (laughs) we're wasted hi guys welcome back i'm in and i'm evie and this is our podcast let's Let's be be honest. honest Don't forget, you can find our podcast on all your normal streaming platforms. And you can even watch us on YouTube if your heart desires. Feel free to tell your friends about us and leave a little review on how we're doing. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Im and Evie to keep up to date with everything we are doing. So without much further ado, how are we doing this week? Um, well, I won't lie. It's been a bit of a rough week, I feel like. Oh God. Do you want to tell the viewers why? Well... We'll just give you some some highlights. Um, (laughs) So on Wednesday, so I mentioned in, I think it was week one, how I'm unemployed and have been for the majority of this pandemic. Um, And I finally got a job, or not a job, a job interview, um, just for a little supermarket. We won't name and shame yet, but we'll see how we feel. Um, And basically got an interview with The saltiness. I know, listen, oh... I don't know if I'm just being over dramatic, but anyway, so I ha- I finally got an interview um, because basically I'd been applying to so many different supermarkets. Also, my mind's going all over the place, but in case you couldn't tell, we're British. We live in England and we are currently in a national lockdown. So everything is closed except for supermarkets. So, well, there's takeaway coffee places and stuff open, but anyway, yeah. so the the only place really you can get a job is at a supermarket. Um, so I've been applying to basically all of them, uh, and getting rejected from most of them. Uh, but I finally got an interview, uh, that was supposed to happen on Wednesday. I know, so excited, uh, that was supposed to happen on Wednesday at 3.30. And, um, I was, I'd prepped for it, researched, done, you know, all the stuff. Um, and literally two hours before got an email being like, due to changes in the business, we will no longer be recruiting this position. So, Which, um, just FYI, is very, very unprofessional, and you know who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm calling you out indirectly. Um, yeah. Like, we have lives. I, I know, well, this the is the thing. Day copy and paste. This is what my mum said. My mum was like, what if I was in another job and took oh, yeah. time off to do this interview and to, or left the job to hopefully get this job, you know? Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't great. You know, I didn't even get a phone call from someone to say it was just a a bog standard email yeah which a phone call goes such a long way as well exactly it just feels like you're not just another like employee x like you actually do have a name and a life and etc exactly so um that was a bit like a phoenix we're gonna rise from the ashes and you're gonna be like huh sorry undisclosed waitrose who (laughs) drop them right in it there it's okay i used to work for them (laughs) yeah it's fine honestly i mean it is what it is i'm not slagging them off but like come on waitress like you're supposed to care for your people and i know i wasn't one of your people but i was close i was close to being (laughs) one of your people (laughs) but anyway we move on it's fine they have changes in the business it happens we we move on um but yeah so that happened on wednesday which was a bit rubbish because i mean imogen knows this unemployment has been a struggle for me um yeah. which as for everyone in the uk that is currently unemployed and has been for you know <clears throat> but um so that happened and then just i'm on my period today you know day one so i just feel a bit vulnerable want to be under yeah. a blanket and also because obviously like coffee. yeah exactly and also because <laughs> like obviously i 
this might be TMI for people, but you'll come to learn that I don't really care and I will say anything. Um, but yeah, so day one of the period is today, obviously. We're filming this on a Saturday. And so yeah. when this happened on Wednesday, I was like in the run up to the period. So I was like already a bit all over the place and stressed. And also, can I just also point out that I'd known about this interview for like three weeks because that was the time yeah. I had. Um, the we had I could notes. Book. We had ready applications. We had outfits. We had mindset ready to be a bis- business boss woman. Mm-hmm. And... I know. Then we ended up with a bag of giant Watsit. Shout out to Watsits for saving the day. Thank you very much. Yeah. And some Ben and Jerry's, I mean. So, yeah. It happened. I'm not going to lie to you. It happened. Um, I won't but... lie. We know who's winning in this situation then. Yeah. I know. Not Waitrose. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they don't even sell giant Watsits. They're too bougie for giant Watsits. No one is too bougie <laughs> for giant Watsits. True. True. Anyway, so that's how my week is is sort of going. But how's your week going? How are you doing? Um, it's been pretty good. Um, I think everyone's feeling a bit like blue this end half of January. I know I am. So I'm just being like a bit more kind to myself. I do feel like this month has and just dragged. For sure. But equally, I do like think last week was like the 1st of January and I'm kind of sat there like it's flu, but it's also dragged. Mm. Um but we, we've got February up next. Really short month, which I'm loving. Yeah. Um, hopefully more normality with work. Poland's just come out of their lockdown, so I've got something to ship. Nice. Which is super exciting. Um, and we're just gonna we're just gonna carry on manifesting those dreams. Imogen will get a promotion and she will just try and be that businesswoman she wants to be. Yes, you will for sure. <laughs> I believe. Um, yeah, we, we need to manifest real <laughs> bad here, people. Um, but, I mean, I've just discovered Married at First Sight Australia, which is getting me through the days. I've seen loads of people going it, on about that. I can't. Australians are on another level. Huge shout out to you guys out there if you're <laughs> listening. Bloody love you. But you guys are like another level of insane um i didn't watch love island australia but i hear some crazy stuff i think my mum watched that big up becky Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and these people on the show are like it it baffles my brain um but i thoroughly thoroughly recommend nice Um, and what's even better because i have no self-control is i can see which couples have stayed together through the joys of social media um so i i know the spoilers but i kind of love it for myself i know i now know what's in store so i would I do that as well to I mean, be fair i just can't handle the surprise yeah so one of my new year's resolutions was to read a bit more to um use books as a bit of a vehicle to to actually be able to speak like a coherent human being and not just communicate like a university student who it was mainly just a bunch of like syllables to be perfectly <laughs> honest by the end of my third year um so we're we're, we're gonna read a range of books we're gonna use that vocab and we're just gonna live a bit more vicariously through the characters who can hug who can go out to dinner And just transport you to a bit of a dream world. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything there. Yeah, I honestly just feel like at at this moment in time, excuse me, um, books and and film and TV, but obviously we're focusing on books Mm -hmm. this episode, are like the escapism that we all need. For Um, sure, yeah. So yeah, no, I completely agree with everything you said. So should we start by saying like, what kind of books do we like? What genres? What are we normal? What do we normally go for? Good question. So I'm very, I go through periods of loving reading and absolutely hating reading. I have to admit, GCSE English turned me off reading for at least three years. Yeah. I mean, reading, stuff like... Great Expectations. Silas Marner. Oh. Did you do Silas Marner? No, oh, I don't even know you who You are that lucky. Is. Silas Marner. If anyone has done Silas Marner out there, you know the pain. Oh. <laughs> anyway. But I also think just like analysing a book to a new level just takes out the fun. I mean, mm. I loved it. But also, like, he blinked, 
what does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know. He blinked. I blink like 12 times a second. I know. I think especially doing a book like it's... that, um, mm. that's not fun to analyse. If we were analysing like Harry Potter, I'd be totally down oh, for that. Oh, love. Yeah. For sure. Um, but, you know, I love a good crime. Um, I think they're really easy for people that um, have kind of lost love with reading. It's a nice way to like start um because everyone loves a good mystery we all like thinking we're the smartest person in the room and outsmarting the thing that we're reading um but equally having said that i hate it when i guess the person but equally love it and also i hate when i don't guess the person but also i like it in the weirdest way Mm -hmm. Mm um i love a good autobiography especially from like inspiring people that i look up to in so many different ways michelle obama barack obama oh i love them even more having read their story because there's so much you don't see behind the facade that you you have on social media that you have through the media that like the english portrayal of the presidents is so so vastly different to the american portrayal Mm. and i didn't realize how mixed an opinion Barack Obama had amongst the American people whereas the UK blooming loved him he could do no wrong Mm -hmm. um and I love a good romance who doesn't true Toff Georgia meet me in London Mm -hmm. oh meet me in Hawaii pre-order now yes please in my basket on Amazon I haven't actually pre-ordered that yet but I need to we're doing that I needed it the um, other day our book club so me Imogen and our other best friend Maddie have a book club shout out to Maddie um and I can't remember what was the first book we did in our book club first book was it sometimes I lie yeah right I'm gonna say it now we need to bring this up now okay yeah so this bring it up this book sometimes I lie by Alice Feeney right so we blew my mind yeah so I'm not gonna so it's sort of a mystery thriller I wouldn't say yep. crime because it's not like a murder mystery but it's like suspense I I think it's like Gone Girl um Girl on a Train yeah Is it Girl yeah on a train? yeah that kind of a vibe yeah so um Shall I read? Oh, yeah, I'll read the back because there's not much on there. But it just says, my name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things that you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. And three, sometimes I lie. And reading that back now, with hindsight, does not mean anything, (laughs) really. Like, this book, right, so we're not going to say anything, but there are so many twists and turns and... I, in particular, had to reread bits. Oh, yeah, for sure. To, to like, process... Hold on a sec. Did that actually happen? Did I just read that that mm-hmm. happened? Um, and myself, Imogen and Maddie, when we all finished the book, we all had different perspectives on what the ending meant and what happened. And can I just... We all Googled it, and there was, like, 20 times what we thought. Yeah. Like, for every one that we thought, there were 20 other speculations. Yeah. And on each website, there was that. Yeah. And I'm still, to this day, confused. I've never read a book before that has left me feeling the way I felt finishing that, to be honest. Um, So, yeah. But I was also really quite happy with it as well. I wouldn't have wanted another book. Oh, no, see, I I want a sequel. I want a sequel to know what the heck is happening at the end. (laughs) I mean, if anyone's read it, can you please shed what you think Please tweet us. Please, please, please. We need to have a conversation. If you haven't read it and you like mystery stuff, read it and then tweet us because we need to have a chat. So good. So, yeah, that was the first one we did for Book Club. But now we... Mm. The most recent one we did, I think, was Meet Me in London, wasn't it? By Georgia Toff. Made in Chelsea. Georgia Toff. We are obsessed with you. Yeah, we and are. it is it you read it and you read it in her voice, which I love. Yeah. I think so many writers, especially if they are writers first, not like Toff, who was like a celebrity first. Mm-hmm. Um you read it and you assign a voice to them and then you see them on interviews or you see their picture and you're like, Oh, you're not quite who I thought would be behind this book. Toff Georgia, George Toff. Whichever way you want to say it. I just like calling her Toff. Yeah. Made in Chelsea there for you. Um, she 
every single word in this book you hear it in her voice mm-hmm. and yeah it's just such a nice narrative it's a classic holiday read it's a feel-good book and we're so ready for meet me in hawaii and we want to be there in hawaii asap Okay, so should we tell the people what books we are both currently reading? So, Dear Emmy Blue. Mm-hmm. That's our book club book on Goodreads, currently. yes. On Goodreads, it is one of 2021's uh, book club reads, and it comes under the category of an easy read. I think it will be delightful. I think with Valentine's Day coming up, it's a nice, easy romance. It feels like it will perk up this very dreary feeling beginning of the year and make everyone feel good. Um, And I've just finished, I finished it yesterday, Cuckoo's Calling. Ooh, okay. Is that crime? Which is a crime novel. Okay. Spot on. (laughs) Um, It is, it's one of J.K. Rowling's um, novels that she wrote under the pseudonym Mm -hmm. of Robert Gelbraith. Okay. Um, Excellent. Really, really recommend. Nice. Did not expect who did the murder to do the murder. Okay. And then when I guessed who did the murder, there were so many, like, intricate details that, like, I didn't even clock to Mm -hmm. that made me feel like, although I guessed who it was, I didn't get the whole full picture of why they did it. So it's very satisfying. Interesting. Love Um, that. She's written quite a few crime novels under this name, and... I might order another one off Amazon today. You do that. Treat yourself. (laughs) What about you? So I am currently reading, obviously, Dear Emmy Blue as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Who's that by? Hold on, I have it here. It is by Leah Louie. Um, So I'm reading that. And then I'm also reading two other books. Well, actually, technically I'm reading three other books. But one of them is James Patterson and Bill Clinton, The President is Missing. But I have been reading that since last summer. Forever. Literally. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know what that says about the book, but I found it quite slow to start. So I'm still going with that. We're still trudging along, but I read it every... Which is surprising. I know. Because normally his books are so good. Evie got me into... What are they called? Like the one, two, three, fours? The Women's Murder Club. Oh, sensational. They are incredible. Big shout out to them. Yeah. Um... Yeah, because I'm... And I remember Evie giving them to me and she gave me like three or four in one go and I was like, Evie, that's a lot of book I haven't read in a while. I want to be eased in gently. Absolutely stormed through them. Yeah, they are so good. If you love crime books and you haven't read that series, it is incredible. There's 20 Mm. so far. I've read up to 19 because I don't think 20's come out in paperback yet. Um, But yeah, they are so, so good. So I was surprised that I found this one quite slow, but I think it will eventually get there because it's got good reviews. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm reading that and then I'm reading two other books that are kind of like self-help. Well, not self-help, but one of them, Love. One of them is a self-help book because it's called The Magic Art of Not Giving a F, F word. Um, I think that's what it's called, Magic Art of Not Giving, yeah. Um, can't think who that's by, but I'm reading that and it's basically all about learning to just not care what other people think, don't worry about anything, mm-hmm. like just do you and get on with your life, you know? Um, Which, can I just, I watched Jamie Lang, huge advocate of mental health, and he was on a podcast the other day, and I think that book, I'm actually really intrigued to read that, and I think that's been on my list for a while. Um, In the olden days, pre-social media, really sorry for the bit of a divergence, um, everyone had their niche, they were the funniest, they were the sportiest, they were the prettiest, they were like the cleverest, whatever. But because of social media, it doesn't matter if you are the funniest in your group, there will always be someone funnier than you. There will always be someone prettier than you. And they are at the edge of your fingertips. You type it into Google and you can see, I don't know how many people on Google, not Google, Instagram, but like six million other people who are just as funny and just as clever as you. So it means that little niche that gives you a purpose in life is taken away. And I think what is so important to be drummed in from the start is not giving a flying monkey Mm -hmm. about what other people think. Do not compare yourself. It's not helpful. It's self-destructive. You have your purpose. You make the people around you happy and that's all you can do. Um, 
and that is your purpose in life yeah. so you can still be the cleverest in your group of friends or you know the prettiest or the fastest or whatever but mm. you, like think about your impact on your group of friends and not on the world and I think that's kind of an important take home yeah and it also goes into like what like how you can say no to things better because I love that yeah do like especially in the work environment like your colleague who you've known for a couple of months invites you to something and you don't really want to go you're not actually invested in the cause or this person Mm -hmm. but obviously we're British we are polite and we say yes to things that we ideally don't really want to and this book's so true yeah exactly and this book I think is written by an American um interesting yeah so Anyway, so it goes into that. So I'm reading that as well. But I read that sort of, mm-hmm. again, sporadically because it's not like a, a binge read, yes. really, is it? Um, and then I'm also reading a book called Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies. And it's basically a edited collection of tons of different women, um, ranging from, like, Zoe Sugg to Kira Knightley in it. Like, all these different celebrities <gasps> and, Keira like, Knightley. women who have written, like, short little essays on what it means to be a woman and, like, female empowerment. Love so that. I'm currently Do you reading... feel really good when you read that? Yes. It's so good. And it's so good to hear these people who are, like, you know, celebrities and, you know, have status mm-hmm. just go through things that are, like, human experiences, you know? Um, and it's sure. by Scarlett Curtis. She, like, is the kind of curator of it. And she's also done one, which I also have, called... Uh, it's not okay to feel blue and other lies I think and it's a mental health one nice yeah so that's all what you know what there has yeah I that's a lot of books even that's a mini library in itself I think what I like now and there's definitely been a shift in the last five years is there are a lot more books that people read that are like self-help self-help books or like making you understand concept much more. Um, I've got one on my bookshelf, which is called Atomic Habits. And it's like, how to break habits, what to do and how to stop them, how to make good habits, how to change your life and live it in a way that's healthy and good and simpler, rather than being like, just fall into old routines and just do it because you're doing it and go through the, like, the movements rather than understanding and actually gaining anything out of doing it. Mm. Yeah, I agree um so like uh this is this is a really pathetic one but um a few of my friends at university used to drink coffee like in a in a concerning amount we're talking 12 cups a day um so caffeine consumption through the roof so they'd go right new year don't want to drink ca- coffee anymore so they wake up in the morning and they couldn't wake up but the mm. reason they couldn't wake up was because they associated waking up with going downstairs to the kitchen, flicking on the kettle and that motion rather than actually needing the coffee. Yeah. So although I think they replaced it with a tea, they still did the motions of like flicking on the kettle, filling up their flask, walking to uni, and it made the process of giving up caffeine easier. Even though tea's got caffeine in it as well though. I think instead (laughs) it was like two teas a day rather than like 12 cups of coffee. Yeah, because they're not obsessed Um, with it exactly this is so, so they funny they didn't need to rely on it yeah this is so funny me. because this actually leads into the icebreaker i have <gasps> tell me any any guesses as to what it could be it's a pretty simple one habits no coffee or oh or tea yeah that's the that's <gasps> the question today Ooh. i mean you know what controversial i'm british i don't really follow the british stereotypes i blooming hate tea i know it tastes like leaves this is the thing i was going to mention this because i was thinking about this icebreaker and then i was thinking about as you've just said the stereotypes of being british and drinking tea Mm -hmm. but i think that this stereotype has come from everywhere but britain like everyone who's not british probably has this stereotype about england yeah um but yeah neither of us are big tea drinkers but also when i lived in nashville for five months Mm -hmm. um So many people asked me, as soon as they found out I was British, A, they were like, are you from London? Which I was like, London's (laughs) not the only place in in England. There are other places in the country. Um, And then they were like, oh, do you really drink loads of tea? Do you drink tea? How much tea do you drink? Is it true everyone drinks tea? And obviously, I am a coffee drinker. 
So I would turn around and say... Which is more American. Exactly. So I would, when they would ask me this, they'd be so excited. They'd be like, oh my God, I'm asking a British person about tea. Like, it was like, I could see the excitement. So when I turned around and said, oh, well, no, I'm really more of a coffee person. I could just see their heart just sink to the ground. (laughs) Yeah, because they were just like, oh, here's a British person. You know, the one British person in every, you know, there wasn't many British people at my uni there, but... I think they yeah. were just like thinking, oh my God, of course she's going to live up to the British stereotype. Like, of course, like, but... So not only does she not live in London, she doesn't like tea. Like, sorry, can you go back to where you came from? I know. From? They're like, I'm sorry, are you actually British? You don't fulfil the criteria. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I really dislike tea. Um, I think if I was to drink tea, solely because of how much nostalgia I have about it, it would have to be tea leaves and a strainer because that's what we always used to have at my grandparents we'd light a fire tea would come in on a tray with tea leaves and we'd have crumpets nice. otherwise i just i don't see the appeal it tastes like leaves the only tea Even i like drink herbal teas yeah i i don't this is the thing as well when i was in nashville i my mum came out with me for the first week and that she is a massive tea drinker like I don't know anyone who drinks more tea than my mum but she obviously in Nashville in America they don't tea's not a huge thing and all they would have in cafes that would go to was like herbal tea and she was so Mm. gutted because it's just not a thing but it's not okay I know I know the only tea that I drink if I do drink tea which is like 10% of the time um I drink biscuit tea what on earth is that i know so my former housemate ellen shout out to you ellen yeah um she introduced me to this and it's okay basically it's i think it's from yorkshire tea is that a company yeah yeah yeah. okay yorkshire tea and it's in a yellow box and it's called biscuit tea and it's basically tea that is slightly flavored to taste like biscuits like rich tea biscuits you know no way and it tastes nicer because it's slightly sweeter than normal tea interesting i know so if any tea i would drink that because it's slightly nicer um but yeah i'm more of a coffee person and you love your mochas and hot chocolates so oh love a mocha if it was coffee or hot chocolate hot chocolate every single day of the week Mm. um although i have massively cut down which has become a big achievement of mine i feel like hot chocolate should be like your treat so like when you go out like go to a cafe yeah, hot and get because yeah, cafe hot chocolates are like bougier than just your standard. Shout out, huge, huge, huge shout out to the Nook in Hampstead Heath. Yeah, um, oh, it's the most beautiful hot chocolate I've ever ever drank, and it is the cutest little cafe. It used to be this dilapidated kebab shop, looked really sketchy, um, and they did it up in twenty twenty, which is even more amazing. And it is like pastel pinks and whites and gold writing with black edging. And then their drinks, oh, it's just amazing. And they do whipped cream and they do a toasted marshmallow on top of the hot chocolate. Ooh, I love how extra it is. That is really nice. I love a good marshmallow and a hot chocolate. Mm. Okay, Evie, if yep. your coffee, what's your go-to coffee? <laughs> Um, my go-to, I'm laughing because Imogen knows the answer to this. I think everyone that knows me knows the answer to this. <laughs> I know her orders off by heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, and by orders, there's literally one because I don't change my coffee order ever. So I, my coffee go-to is a vanilla latte. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, and I, I was going to say, oh, I get hot when it's cold and iced when it's hot, but that's not true. I get you iced don't. coffee all year round. <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> You're like, Imogen, is it acceptable to get an ice? And I'm like, are you warm? You're like, we did do a long walk to this cafe. I'm like, get an ice. Then. I know. I'm always just like trying to think of reasons to not have an ice. I don't know why, but I always end up caving. Um, but my favourite go-to that I currently have in my mug now is the Nescafe mm-hmm. Gold Vanilla Latte. They are so good. They are. I can I can agree with that because I've got them in my cupboard as well. Yeah, you get a little froth on top, which is so fancy, which we love. Next level. Um, to the point that when Evie was in America, I sent her Cadbury's chocolate and vanilla latte sachets because I knew they were the two things she would miss most. Yeah, and it was honestly, I remember opening it and it was, a dr- oh, it was just a dream. I couldn't believe it. 
I use them so quickly though because I was just like oh my god I have them back and I just like <laughs> used them up in like a week and then I was like oh I've still got two months left that I have to be without them <laughs> oh, but anyway um okay back to books I want to end by okay. asking you and I also want to give a shout out to another podcast um so there's mm. this podcast called bookish and it is hosted by Sonia Walger, who is an actress. She was in Lost and oh, yeah. Catch, and she's a British actress. And she has a podcast called Bookish because she went to, I believe, Oxford University? Oxford or Cambridge, one of the two. Oh, I want to say Oxford. And she did English literature. So she loves reading, she loves books. She has a podcast called Bookish, check it out. And she interviews different figures, celebrities. She lives in Los Angeles, so I know she interviewed like the mayor of LA and like other famous people but she interviewed actors as well cool. that she's worked with um and she asked them um so it's basically like the podcast Desert Island Discs but book themed yes so she loved that yeah so she asks them like what books have shaped you and like have you know would you take to a desert island so my question to mm-hmm. you Imogen is what is one book that has kind of like shaped you and like, or made you a better person, or just like a book that you would 100% recommend to every person to read. Oh, can I do two? Okay. Okay, so book that shaped me, Mm -hmm. for sure, was, (laughs) was Matilda. Okay. To the point that I wanted to be Miss Honeybun. I went for her for World Book Days. I took such a huge interest in maths. It was a, it was a joke. Like, I just, I wanted to be that person. Um, and it also, like, just, it was my, it was my escapism. It was my Raoul Dahl's, like, comfortable world of the sky is not the limit and, yes, you can have a chocolate world or you can make... Um, I don't even know, like, monkeys sit in tree wearing ties. I think that's in the twits and all these different things. It was just a fun world of escapism. And the other one, which is a really recent book, is Barack Obama's book. Mm-hmm. I It challenged me to think about things in a different way. And I think if I'd read it, like, I don't know, five, ten years ago... It would have been a good book, but I wouldn't have taken on board the messages. But while I was reading it December, January um, of 2020, it made me think, you know, is that right? Is that okay? Mm. I can relate it to, like, what's happened in America recently. I can relate it to what I've seen living in London and then living in a very white, affluent, southern country. Like... I went from a really diverse class in London to not having any diversity at all in West Sussex. Not saying that's bad, but it means that unless you read and unless you educate yourself, you will be in your little bubble and you won't understand the whole huge world Mm. that is out there. And although it's important to escape and have that imagination, that creativity that Roald Dahl instilled in me as a child, it's also important to realise the black and white truths and that you can paint that and change how the future is for you and for everyone else. That's interesting because my books actually are similar. So I'm again, I'm combining two, but it's just because I read them both at the same time. Love. And they are The Colour Purple and The Bluest Eye. Tell me. So they're both basically about race and class and things like that. So I did them for, I want to say GCSE English, um, but they are so thought provoking and so well written and like, kind of hard to read but a necessary read so those mm-hmm. would be my books for everyone just to read to because you need to because it will help you yeah. be a better human being um and also another one to kill a mockingbird oh i love that book yeah i've read that book so many times it is tattered yeah that is an iconic oh, I think should... just classic i love that um And so I'm going to finish up with our quote of the day and it comes from, so two days ago, very sadly, an actress called Cicely Tyson died and she was in The Help and I knew her from The Help and How to Get Away with Murder. So the quote today is from her. 
Um, and it is, the moment anyone tries to demean or degrade you in any way, you have to know how great you are. Nobody would bother to beat you down if you were not a threat. I love that. Yeah. There is nothing more to add. No, I think that's it. We just end. Cool. <laughs> wow. It's what, been a delight, everyone. It has, but <laughs> what are we doing next week? Should we do uni? Yeah, chat about uni life. Let's do that. I like that. Yeah. Right, well, I hope everyone tunes in next week. Hope everyone stays safe. Yeah, we love And get you. reading. Bye. Bye.